Okay, you can proceed. Thank you very much, ma'am. Let's start with our today's session. A very pleasant evening to one and all present here. An investment in knowledge pays the best interest. With this quote, in this warm evening, to refresh and create an impact onto the minds, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, Savita Engineering College, brings to you a webinar on modern technologies, artificial intelligence, and machine learning by Mr. P. N. Narayana Prasad, Senior Technology Architect, Infosys, Bangalore. A glimpse of our college and department. Savita Engineering College established in the year 2001, an autonomous institution which follows the Finland-based education model, and we march towards less is more concept. Our college makes the students job ready by providing industry 4.0 ready curriculum, which impacts this to 21st century skills. Project-based learning integrated with subjects improves the student skill set and makes our learners to be the best, which is the motto of our college. The Department of EC was established in the year 2001. Our vision is to develop the department into a state of art with center of excellence in electronics and communication engineering education on par with global standards. The Department of EC has well experienced faculty of proven ability and diverse specialization. The faculty actively involves themselves in research in the fields of robotics, VLSI, MEMS, image processing, and embedded systems. Now, I would like to introduce our guest of the day. Mr. P. N. Narayana Prasad is an experienced, versatile, hands-on, and highly motivated enterprise architect. He's a technology thought leader with 20 plus years of experience in IT field, with application security being his specialization. As a thought leader, he has led several successful engagements in the digital transformation, e-commerce, banking investment, core banking and asset management, hospitality, insurance domains for top clients across USA, Europe, and Asia. Mr. P. N. Narayana Prasad graduated from MCE Hassan in the instrument, instrumentation and technology stream. He plays tennis and indulges in health fitness regime during leisure time. He has traveled to USA, UK, Germany, UAE multiple times for business related. We are very happy to have you with us today, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, that's you very nice. You may please take over this session now. Sure, sure. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for uh, Savita Engineering College uh, to let me in. So uh, I would like to take you through the rest of the journey. So as a part of this today's uh, uh, discussion, or let's say we are going to talk on modern technology, okay? So I have come up with a few very uh, small, but very graphic oriented kind of presentation, okay? So that's how, uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take over the screen. So let me walk you through to the, uh, the next due course of time. What are we going to talk? What are you going to hear, etc. okay? Good, so I'm going to take over and I'm going to switch flip back to my screen. Uh, I've got uh, uh, I've got some uh, interesting things to come up to you. So is my uh, screen uh, viewable? Is it? Uh, yes, sir, your screen is visible, sir. Yeah, very good, fantastic, actually, okay. So let me try to minimize a couple of things and maximize technology. That's what we are today here for actually, okay? Good, uh, good, good evening students. Good evening, uh, the next generation engineers, okay? Maybe in the field of computer science technology or architecture or whatever it is, okay? Uh, just to keep remember, I was also a student maybe two decades ago, uh, as uh, they introduced in the introduction, uh, I'm also a BE graduate actually, more from instrumentation, but have been in this industry for some time. So, so let me start today. So what, what are we going to talk for the next 30 minutes or 40 minutes actually? Okay, so let's, let's have a, a small kind of overview agenda, what I'm going to take you through. I would be very delighted and you'll be very happy to receive the questions from your end because I'm very sure you are in the curriculum mode or academic mode, whereas we have come from the industry. 
So <clears throat> once we completed our academic and curriculum, we came to this industry. We have spent uh, almost two decades, let's say 21 years. Uh, we have been part of large scale um, engagements, actually multi-million dollar, uh, multi-million um, euro kind of uh, implementations. Okay, so I'm going to share you some of the uh, industry knowledge uh, as well for today's topic. So the way I have structured today, okay, I have made it very five uh, agenda, fine line item. First, I'm going to introduce to you myself because you need to know me. If you know me better, then you'll be able to understand what I'm speaking for you. Second, where do I come from? Where did I develop such kind of skills? Or where did I been able to come to you with this kind of uh, information? So of course, the organization that has been providing me all the facilities, okay? Let's spend a minute understanding what Infosys is. Uh, I'm very sure I would meet you once you graduate uh, once you come through all your recruitment process and everything, uh, if you happen to be in Infosys, give me a shout. I'll take you for a coffee tea. That's my take on this, okay? Then coming to the today's topic. Today's topic, I have made it two important selective subjects, actually. That is artificial intelligence, machine language learning. Now, since I know that you are doing the study, you are in the field of study of these uh, advanced topics, uh, even though in industry or in our organizations, we do different extensive implementation works. I don't want you boredom with those kind of nuances actually. So that's why what I've prepared is, I have prepared a kind of overview kind of session, which really helps you, fosters you to understand what this artificial intelligence is. What is machine language learning? And there are a few other terminologies that you need to be aware of with cognitive intelligence, natural language processing, then deep machine learning. Let's, we'll spend a few minutes on this actually as well. So this is going to be today's thing. And finally, we will see where we are today. Now, after having gone through a 101 kind of overview on the artificial intelligence, understanding what does machine language learning means, how it is different than the human learning. Today, where are we? Today in 2020, where are we standing? Okay, that is what I'm going to give you a picture about today where we are in industry. Uh, before I actually get into the agenda item, uh, first of all, I would like to thank the Savita Engineering College Management. Uh, you people who have come, you are spending your uh, very quality time here over the internet technologies in hearing these kind of sessions. And the most importantly, Today in a situation where we have the COVID kind of situation. So I would request everybody to take utmost care for their health. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I can't wear mask and uh, say, even though I have, I have to wear a mask, it's okay. I'm going not going to have taken out my mask outside, but please uh, give preference to your health, safety. Uh, utilize your time in your home whenever you are doing it, whenever you are in lockdown period or whenever you're staying in the home. Okay, go through the various YouTube channels, various study materials try to understand how the industry is going. So keep your health safe, actually. That's the one key important message I wanted to deliver before I actually get into it. Okay, good. Now let's start the uh, session, actually, okay? So as you can see in the video, this is me. Uh, am I matching the photo on the pic? Yeah, more or less on my biometric, uh, if you look at my eyes, nose and lips, these are all matching. Yes, it's me, the same person. I'm just joking, okay? So. See, I am a graduate. I'm a Bachelor of Engineering graduate from a premier institution at Hasa. That's called Malnad College of Engineering. So I come from the stream called Instrumentation Technology. So what is Instrumentation Technology? Instrumentation Technology is a branch of engineering science that deals with the, mainly with the transducers. I know what is a transducer. I still try to remember my 21 years of my education background. A transducer is nothing but a device which converts energy from one form to the another form. So I come from that instrumentation technology, no relation with computer science. We maximum what we studied is microprocessor, but today it's not the case. Today we study computers, uh, softwares, algorithms everywhere, okay? So this is my uh, education and I've been working with Infosys for the last four years. So I've been part of uh, other companies like Accenture, Tata Consultancy Services, Unisys, uh, Sapient Technologies, and I have been there for uh, quite some of the countries like US, uh, where I was in Washington, Reston, New York, actually, then I was with Maine, then I was with a uh, uh, couple of places in Florida, etc. for various engagements in the area of software, then back again 
uh, with Dubai work for Dubai government actually. And currently, currently I was I'm one of the GST uh, project architect. So you would have heard about the GST word. So I'm one of the architect for the GST where we work with the finance ministry actually. Okay, that's all said and done. That's what I do for my salary. Okay, to get money. Okay, to invest on smartwatch, to invest on mobile phones, etc. But what do I do of my interest? Of my interest, I keep playing tennis. So I have been playing tennis for last 10 years. So I follow very health regime, right at fitness, etc. My recent interest have been electric car and electric scooters, actually. So I've been very much fascinated by this electric car, electric scooters. So these are a couple of things which I would like uh, all the participants to have a look at it, uh, adopt the energy, uh, the natural energies, avoiding the petrol or the diesel kind of thing. So this is one of my la latest uh, entry into my skills. <clears throat> okay, in natural, this is me. Okay, good, actually. So the person you are seeing in the pic is same, the person in the video is in the same person who is speaking in the audio actually as well. Cool. Now let's uh, say, as I told, I'm from a company called Infosys. So Infosys uh, has been a company where I've been working in the field of uh, digitalization, modernization, modern technologies, uh, understand what the customer wants, uh, create a solution using the software, then give them back and see how it's working, okay? So uh, I would like you also to know that Infosys is one of the global leader in the next generation digital services and consulting. So uh, if you don't understand digital services and consulting word, it's okay, absolutely fine. Don't worry about it. Digital services means it refers we as architects using technology, we develop solution using artificial intelligence, we develop solution using digitalization, mobile devices, mobile apps, etc. So the work kind of work we do for our customer is called digital services. What they ask, we do. This is called as digital services. No consulting. Consulting is like a teacher. Okay, we work like lecturers, we work like teachers, or we work like advisors. Let's say a customer has a problem. So even before taking the service from any other company, so what he would like to do is he would like to know with whom he has to take the service. What is the preferred technology? Should I use artificial intelligence? Should I use robotics? Should I use program paradigm, etc.? So that's where the consulting part comes. So Infosys does consulting. Infosys does digital services. In fact, we have our own artificial intelligence platform, which we have developed for various customers, what we call as NIA, N-I-A. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit on this as we go forward. So if you, if you know, the whole story of the Infosys began with uh, one of our very much revered uh, uh, sir, we call the NRN sir, Narayan Murthy, he's one of the co-founder. So the, he's one of the main strong force behind Infosys, which stands for ethics, professionalism, and for customers actually. So what do we have in Infosys? We have around uh, two lakh employees. There are two lakh employees in Infosys who works in at customer premises, as well as in various delivery centers. So we call delivery centers. So these delivery centers exist across various places. It could be Bangalore, Mysore, Bhubaneswar, Guwahati, Jaipur, Chennai. Even in Chennai also we have our office. So these are all called as Infosys development centers actually. Okay, other than this, we do have offices in 46 countries actually. So we do have uh, in 46 countries. And what we do, what is the total money how much money we generate for uh, India? We generate around 12 billion USD dollars, actually. So if you don't understand billion, it's okay. Leave it. It has got some X number of zeros added to it. So basically what I wanted to say is that we have money. We have got some good sufficient of money that we generate and we distribute among the employees as salary. So this is all towards the Infosys. Now, uh, the picture that you are seeing is uh, the Mysore campus. There's a reason why I bought it is because this is one of the most admired Infosys campus. We take very proud in depicting this picture in all the forums and seminars because we have established one of the world's largest education center at Mysore where you can train 10,000 people at a time. One single time, you can train 10,000 people actually. That's the strength of what we have. So this is in nutshell, the Infosys is about, you can go to website www.infosys.com. You'll be able to see a lot of uh, more information. 
so i see some of the hands raised actually so let me try to see uh, is there any question for us at this point of time so uh, uh, chitra is there any question for us so no sir you can proceed we'll take very, up the questions at the end at sir at the end okay very yes, good sir. thank you thank very you, much sir. okay so okay now let's come to the today's session actually now before getting into the session what is artificial intelligence machine learning this what sounds too much uh, too much see even when i graduated from engineering college okay all this algorithm okay what is this algorithm see we used to always write differentiation integrations with that symbols dy by dx plus dy dx logarithm of value sin by cos theta and all but we were always amazed how this gets converted into the system into the software okay <coughs> so i'm very sure you also have the same curiosity here now let's try to break down the uh, curiosity into reality and see what exactly is artificial intelligence is about actually now i'm going to take you through one of the event actually that occurred actually in 1996 10th february okay 10th february 1996 okay we we had a very famous event occurring now Uh, i'm sure you would recognize the person whom i am showing okay he is a gentleman by the name garrick kasparov okay now this gentleman and the most fascinating thing now you see a machine here okay okay so i am very sure uh, many of you might not be uh, have seen this uh, even uh, we had just heard about it in the newspapers in 1996 when we were in the engineering that there is a machine called deep blue which is built by ibm and they ran it for 5 6 years they did programming algorithms one of the main reason of developing this machine is to make him make play against gary kasparov in the chess championship okay just just here okay see how fascinating this is in the year 1996 on 10th february chess world champion gary kasparov versus ibm develop deep blue a machine okay now these are two chess players now they have to play the chess and they have to find who can beat each other why was this chess tournament was organized this was organized as a part of natural intelligence that we a human has versus a separate intelligence which is developed by the human where human does not exist but the intelligence exist as a algorithm so this is what i wanted to bring out with this depiction so this was the very uh, unique kind of event where a man with his own intelligence with his uh, brains with his nerves uh, with his various uh, in um, thinking process agreed to play with a artificially developed intelligence via the computer called deep blue now this was based on brute force algorithm actually Uh, i'm not sure how many of you heard uh, if students are in, in graduation engineers are there from computer science background you would have heard binary tree sorting tree you would have heard this brute force search also so brute force search is an algorithm that was used by ibm engineers that was fed into the chipsets of this ibm deep blue machine which was ready to play against gary kasparov in the chess championship actually okay so what do we have here we have man versus alternative so it is natural intelligence versus another intelligence called artificial intelligence so now what happened to this these two people played the games the first game the machine won you would be very surprised okay the first chess was won by the ibm deep blue whereas in another three chess uh, matches gary kasparov draw or drew the match with this machine see how fascinating this world is see in 1996 a, an event occurred in the history of computer machines where machine challenged a human user and won the first game so what is that we have to understand from this event we have to understand from this event is that it is not machine winning versus the human it is the applicability of another intelligence in parallel to human intelligence this is what is we have to take away from this event so the another intelligence is what we call as artificial intelligence 
in intelligence which is supported by algorithm in intelligence which is supported by process a intelligence which is performed using the chipsets and the machines is called an artificial intelligence i'm very sure you can go make a search on brute force algorithm um, many computer science information technology as to engineering students you would be fascinated to understand what the equation of the brute force means but however man versus another uh, man versus machine this is the one of the key aspects so this is what we call in very simple terms in artificial intelligence in artificial intelligence is an alternative to the human intelligence now you might ask me a question we have animals so we have pets in our house we have dogs we have cats let's say some of us uh, see pigeons and uh, sparrows coming into our balconies and all is that an artificial intelligence no that's not an artificial intelligence that's again an animal intelligence okay that's not going to be an artificial intelligence okay now then what let's say during this covid situation or corona i visit a hospital we have to maintain social distancing we are not supposed to touch we have to keep our hands clean with all sanitized and all but there are things that needs to be moved now you see that in a hospital or a clinic there is a machine which is moving with the tray with the hand sanitizer it is giving doing your thermal check on your forehead etc what is it that is called artificial intelligence the robotics that is the artificial intelligence because there the man does not exist okay so i am sure we have spent lot of time now this was one of a very great event that occurred in the history of uh, the information technology where a man played against a machine and this was possible only due to the algorithm based brute force paradigm brute force program okay on a chipset of a machine okay this is what we call as an artificial intelligence is it is man versus machine but in the interest of the human kind okay so anything that is not interest of the human kind is not considered to be intelligence that we have to always keep in mind in our forethought in our action and in all our process actually it has to be in favor of the mankind good uh, it was also long time that i also saw gary kasparov i had also forgotten this ibm deep blue good now having said this now if you look at today's topic actually moving ahead what is technology so even before we go to study what uh, how artificial intelligence helps what it is made up of uh, what is natural language processing etc so what is technology uh, i am from instrumentation technology uh, some of them are from uh, information technology information i understand instruments i understand but what is technology that's what we don't understand many times we forget the roots so let's start from the technology so first let's understand what is technology what has been the technology implications so far and then we will be able to understand what is modern technology so technology is very simple in my in my opinion a technology is the study and transformation of techniques tools machines which are created by humans let's say for example computer computer is also a one of the machine technology now you go you take a mobile mobile is also one of the technology okay you many of you engineering student go to ac motor dc motor workshop yes that's also a technology alternating current producing and direct current producing i'm not sure how many of you uh, go to the labs in your electric or electronics uh, part of it when we were engineers we were studying the engineering so ac motor lab dc motor lab were all mandatory for us so where were big big machines is that technology yes of course it's a technology microprocessor kit okay for uh, <clears throat> you were uh, uh, what is uh, this one alp programming actually assembly language level programming yes that's also a technology so anything that deals with the transformation of techniques tools or anything that is created by hum human is the technology now when the technology started you, you and we all know that like uh, if we talk about computers it was um, uh, first one of the biggest computer that was developed which occupied several rooms with vacuum tubes etc uh, today we replace with a very monolithic uh, integrated chips uh, very on, on top of a finger thumb only on top of the finger thumb you can have okay millions of transistors developed that is the technology today but earlier we used to use vacuum tubes and we used to use pnp junction npn junction etc 
So how did this evolve? Now, all this happened in the year 1940, 50s and all. This was the process where we started using uh, what you call abacus, a bead machine where uh, even the children used to count the, mathematically they used to do the counting. Okay, that's also a machine. Yes, of course. There's a tool, there's a technique where you arrange the beads and you do the calculation. <coughs> Similarly, okay, so we built first computer, which is ENIAC, e -N -I -A -C, which was very big, massive, big actually. The Whatever the engineering college I saw, or the Mysore campus, I told, yes, it was almost pretty big size in that it used to fit several rooms actually. So we started with computer machines with vacuum tubes, electrodes, actually PNP, NPN junction. Then later we developed supercomputers that can do parallel activities. Earlier the computer machine used to do only one task at a time. Now later we developed supercomputers that can do multiple tasks. That's where the supercomputer concepts came into picture. You would have heard Indian Institute of Science at Bangalore uh, had the first supercomputer in India, still we use it. Okay. And now we have advanced very much actually. Later we talked about mainframes. Mainframes were also large machines where you used to hold huge amounts of data, big data, okay? So almost all the financial data, banking data, everything were uh, stored on these mainframes, but it became very big, big, big. Now the time, now as we improved in the technology, we came to desktop. Now we moved to laptops and PDAs, personal devices. Then we moved to mobiles, smartphones, uh, you know, we had uh, only regular feature phones, but later we moved to smartphone, now, then what? After smartphone, we move to a smartwatch. Uh, this is one of the uh, smartwatch, which I normally wear, where I put my SIM card and I do all my health, fitness, work, SMS, email, Outlook, etc. Actually, now, now smartwatch. But currently where we are, in terms of modern technology, today we stand at digitalization. So today we talk more about digital, digital, digital. Wherever you go, we say digital. This is what, where we are, and this is called modern technology. The computers, the supercomputers, the mainframe, these are all called old technologies. The laptops, the mobile, the smartwatch, the digital, et cetera. This is what we call modern technology. I'm very sure whenever you want to order pizza, now you don't go to Domino's or Pizza Hut. I'm very, very sure actually. Okay, I'm also pretty like you. What we do, I just take my mobile, open my Swiggy app or my Food Panda or anything, key in my location, then it, uh, order, uh, give my number of orders of the pizzas that I want to eat, etc. Okay, what is it? This is digitalization. This is called modern technology. Now you want to go from one place to another place. You use Uber, Ola cab. Okay, they find uh, what is the nearest car available for you to pick up, how much time he can wait, the metering aspect. This is also called digital. So we are in the era of modern technology where digital or the digitalization is the key aspect, okay? Now I will tell you why I use this digital, uh, how does it um, maps to uh, artificial intelligence and all. I will come, I will come to that. But let's understand what is technology, now what is modern technology? Now, having said so about digital, what is digital? Digital is all about bringing user interaction to the machine, making machine more user-friendly to human, using the machine to solve the problems, okay? Use machine where humans cannot go actually. So these are all the aspects of the being digitalization. So in order to achieve this digitalization, even if you want to order on the Swiggy or the Food Panda or on the Uber app, everywhere today we talk about algorithm. So all our actions are backed up by the algorithm. Let's take, for example, we are using today's Zoom actually. So we are using a Zoom software to view me. Behind this, there is an aspect of digitalization, okay? That gives me various controls to use the Zoom application. At the same day, audio quality, video quality is very high fidelity. And at the same time, it, it knows some of the predictions actually, okay? It knows what I want. It throws some of the features. So that is because of artificial intelligence programs that is running in these server softwares that, uh, that helps us. That is where the big picture of digital and artificial intelligence is coming. Good. We, we understood about Gary Kasparov, the man machine. The machine is the artificial intelligence. Then we understood how did the uh, uh, era of digitalization occur and today where we stand. 
so that's where we stand today for the discussion about artificial intelligence now let's start understanding artificial intelligence so how does artificial intelligence is looking in world today <clears throat> so there are various aspects like uh, food food related aspect then uh, e-commerce related aspect etc but i have taken education because we are today talking about uh, uh, education uh, related so if you look at today artificial intelligence in education market we stand okay we are predicating that today we stand at 2024 okay we are predicting that it is going to be a 6 billion dollar industry 6 billion is very big amount trust me it's a very very big amount you can sustain for more number of time okay so now why i wanted to show you all this is it is not only that tech it is not only good to hear about technology but how it is helping the world how it is helping the global how it is helping the various domains of the world be it a transport logistics healthcare or be it government or be it education so if you look at we in 2017 the education market where artificial intelligence was used it was just around 400 million it's a very minuscule very small number for uh, if you ask the industry people 400 million is okay okay it's okay but if you talk about 6 billion dollar it's a huge massive okay with 6 billion dollar we can uh, infosys can uh, keep all their 2 lakh employees without uh, getting any new project for 5 years we can pay the salary that much amount this is okay so that's where this machine uh, language learning or artificial intelligence have their impacts now in especially in education system okay for universities e e learning e learning is one of the key aspect where we use machine learning and artificial intelligence extremely why because today no more we try to have a classroom or a instructor led sessions we always would like okay monitor based e learning capabilities like i'm using my video camera the camera will monitor me will look at my portrait will say am i the same person or it says i was present from how much time to another time so it will mark my attendance it will say that physically i was present and if i ask any question that takes the question converts to various languages and sends to various instructors and using the artificial intelligence programming what we do is that we create chatbots okay chatbots are small tiny programs that come up on the screen what they do is they understand your question and they give the answer so when they when they when they hear the question when they take the audio from us okay let's say i am doing a uh, artificial intelligence using uh, session and i am monitoring the people now the audio audio that goes to the system okay it knows that audio matches a specific recognition it it tries to see whether this audio is for a english language chinese or it's for hindi or what then it says oh yeah this is going to be an english language so what are the words used it okay so i would have asked a question so it does natural language processing it takes the question can uses natural language processing abilities and understands that there is a question and then it goes back to its uh, stored data stores then gets a answer and the chatbot gives you an answer so that is how we connect this artificial intelligence okay we will talk more about it i just given an example so that uh, how artificial intelligence can be used uh, in a education system good this is how this is the the market trust me with our experience in uh, industry presence 6 billion is a huge huge money actually okay good we we are now we are now exactly into the artificial intelligence so if you see if if you ask me what is artificial intelligence again i say it's a handshake between a human hand and the robotic hand okay so i'm sure many of you would have seen a film from rajinikanth uh, robo 1 or 2 or anything yes that is art, that is the one of the a product of an artificial intelligence okay so it is it is a handshake between human and the machine actually now we need to understand there is one more terminology that we frequently use that is called iot internet of things internet of things also has a small overlapping with artificial intelligence why because in internet of things we say man machine and the software all three we say 
So one of the example for uh, Internet of Things is uh, Google uh, acquired a company called Nest a couple of years ago. What the company Nest was doing is it had a refrigerator where you had food placed and the refrigerator was able to say what is the expiry time of the food by reading the scanned barcode scanner of the food on the fruits. It was able to uh, daily calculate what's the expiry date of the food. And once the expiry date uh, reached, it sent SMS and it sent email to the owner of the refrigerator, okay, telling that your food is going to expire, throw it away. So this is as an example I told. So this is called IoT, Internet of Things, where you need artificial intelligence, yes, definitely. But you have got the machine, the software, and the human, okay? So let's come back to artificial intelligence, okay? So we saw that Gary, Gary Kasparov was beaten in the first game of chess by IBM machine called Deep Blue, which used parallel programming brute force search algorithms. That is what we call as artificial intelligence. Now, coming to the academic, actually, it's a branch of computer science, okay, that deals with simulation of intelligent behavior in computers. How do you simulate the intelligence? It is through data, data sets, which is the input algorithm, which runs actually, okay, these algorithms are specially prepared and implemented using software. So you have Python software, now we have a Julia one more software, okay, where we will convert or we will write an algorithm as a software. You would have used your microprocessor programming ALPs like move MV, A comma B registers similarly. A, pro, a, a algorithm with integration, differentiation, uh, zero to infinity, dx by dy, all these are available as mathematical libraries for us in the software, in softwares like Python or Julia, etc. Okay. So these softwares give us the differentiation libraries, integration libraries. You to give me my sine theta, cos theta kind of all such of rich length of libraries. Okay. Based on these libraries only, I develop the final output actually. Okay. Now, what are the examples of artificial intelligence? Many of you use iPhone. Siri is there. Siri is based on artificial intelligence. Google now, your Google traffic. When you open your uh, mobile, actually, you get your uh, Google now news coming up because it knows what kind of news do you like. Okay. It would have done some amount of processing. There's an algorithm running behind on the Android OS. Then you have got the robots, robots uh, which are used in healthcare, medicine, remote uh, assistance, etc. Okay, but did we did we ever thought who created all this? We talked in 1996, Gary Kasparov was beaten by this. But is 1996 the actual birth of artificial intelligence? No. What happened was there was a um, mathematician called Alan Turing. You would have seen very famous film in the recent couple of years. It won an Oscar award also. You can see more life of Alan Turing. Alan Turing was a gifted mathematician who could decode an encryption. He was used mainly by the uh, army people, defense people to crack the code. Okay, he's the one who wrote a paper. He wrote a white paper actually, which said, can computer things? By 1950, computers were already there. It was a very big NIC machine. Okay, processing using vacuum tubes, PNP junction, etc. He wrote an advanced thinking called Can Computer Think? Okay, can computer think or does computer does only the set of tasks that is being given or the programs being fed? That was a starting point for the artificial intelligence. So it is Alan Turing to whom we should say thanks today in 2020 for bringing up this AI concepts. Later, what happened? As Alan Turing continued his work, actually, he did a lot of research work on telling why computer alone should take the sets, data, and move on. Why can't it take the data and think on itself, actually? Just like how a neural network works in the human mind. That's when, again, he did a study, and again, he published a very notable work on artificial intelligence. He used artificial intelligence as the first time in 1956. So today, we should really say thanks to Alan Turing because he was the one who pioneered the concepts of artificial intelligence. So this is all about history. Now, if I, if I try to break up artificial intelligence and try to see what artificial intelligence has few of the things actually, okay? 
what is what is it has how how it is different than a human actually okay there are some of the aspects that are part of artificial intelligence uh, software or thought process or modeling okay we use the word called modeling in artificial intelligence in natural language processing and all because modeling is not nothing but building a prototype actually if i have a problem to solve that i will first use set of algorithms and say that i'm going to try it on the data actually so that set of algorithms becomes my model today even uh, today oh, the models are developed by people called data scientist okay earlier there were no data scientist now we have a data scientist who work on this data and create this models the algorithms actually we software engineers we write uh, all python coding and then we will work on that now let's understand if i try to get inside an artificial intelligence what is needed to be an artificial intelligence for a machine it needs to sense it needs to sense get an event we call it event which gets triggered actually so it needs to sense then comprehend comprehend means it needs to understand it needs to take it inside for processing okay it needs to do natural uh, selections natural processing then it needs to compare its uh, natural processing with other knowledge base so these are all the process of comprehending finally yes there is an event that gets triggered because of the event i get my thinking my processing my algorithm starts then finally it gives me an output that is called act that means it has to give you output at the same time so if any one of these components are missing it's not going to be an artificial intelligence you have to sense you have to comprehend take it assimilate it digest it then produce the output now uh, in this diagram what i'm trying to say you is the technologies that helps all this is audio video audio video technologies okay then uh, we have got um, uh, audio processing we have got uh, knowledge repository see whenever we do natural language processing natural language processing means we call in short term as nlp nlp is a uh, process within artificial intelligence where i do the extraction extraction of the keywords extraction of the <clears throat> contents and try to see what is the meaning of it if i want to interpret i have to go through natural language processing for example if i raise my finger and say like this it's a thumb how does this i know this okay now raising the thumb is sensing it my eyes see it okay and my nerves also get straightened up okay now this is called sense actually now this is the thumb the mind mind has to get it that the shape this is the first finger it is on my right hand it has got this much length so who does this my mind neurons okay they do the do the comprehension comprehending why they do comprehending because when i was a child my father my mother or my parents they have told me that this is called thumb this is called finger other fingers this is called right hand actually this is called knowledge creation so during my child as i grow from my birth i have been given this data sets telling that first is the thumb last is the last finger like that they have given me so that's what we have to do then finally i have to speak telling that oh this is a thumb this is called acting okay so anything that does like this human is an artificial intelligence we say that it has got artificial intelligence so to do that in our it world we need audio processors video processors we need knowledge storage databases then we need algorithms using python julia there are so many programming languages are available finally act when i say act means it will stimulate it will give you response actually uh, let's say swiggy in swiggy app actually you log into swiggy you say i need this food so it needs to identify the nearby available restaurants and give you the latest offer so that is done through by going through its processing capability finally it gives you the pop up from the mobile that is called acting okay now in this artificial intelligence there are couple of other aspects involved which is called cognitive cognitive uh, intelligence or cognitive systems however we sometimes use artificial intelligence and cognitive intelligence uh, synonyms actually why because cognitive intelligence most of the time refers to the human thinking only okay let's say alan turing published a paper uh, on artificial intelligence because of cognitive thinking okay 
so he did not publish paper because of artificial intelligence he produced paper because of cognitive intelligence that is what our mind the neural networks the neural cells the brain but however today in 2020 we hope we are still trying to make sure that can computers or machine can have their own neural networks and can do cognitive thinking without waiting for set of programs actually that's a you would have seen that uh, endiran film or uh, rajinikanth film where that uh, they create a massive army and all actually beyond they go they do try to do things which is not programmed actually that is called cognitive thinking good so sensing comprehending and acting these are the three critical essence of uh, artificial intelligence now where and all we can use this artificial intelligence transport systems logistics healthcare medicine let's say you have a remote doctor you have to perform a surgery actually so that's a robotic aided uh, remote surgeries or remote uh, audio video healing etc now water okay in natural resources like water finding the purity of the water or trying to trying to find whether the water exists below the earth even before you do boring etc in technology that's mainly in software actually we develop for chatbots etc in environment to study the uh, the global warming uh, it's a very massive concept that's where artificial intelligence helps temperature wind pressure etc so many things the uh, green trees or okay, the uh, uh, impact of uh, lesser green trees or uh, how we can grow green trees all these are all massive massive areas for environment in traffic now if you use uh, uh, applications uh, let's say like i am using uh, quick ride an app to go to my infosys office so the entire quick ride app is built using uh, artificial intelligence programs so what it does is uh, it tries to identify who is the one who is giving the ride and here is right to me and to the rider if you log in as a rider it will it will always using the google maps it will tell you which is the shortest distance actually how this is possible this is possible only because of the comprehending okay processing algorithm based that's all the areas huge areas are there education e learning there's so many finance banking so many areas so that comes to the, the conclusion of uh, ai now let's see what is machine language learning see machine language learning is not different than artificial intelligence but machine language learning is one of the ai impl implementations that means machine language learning is is one of the is subset of artificial intelligence see, these two are not separate artificial intelligence is the topmost to do artificial intelligence see, we have to create a machine language learning so what is machine language learning then actually machine language learning involves the data mining data mining means you get always huge amount of real time data sets offline data sets you have to work on those data sets you have to execute using algorithm you have to classify the data you have to understand the data okay you have to go for a deep learning which is today's technology then you have to support your system autonomous without the intervention of human so these are all the parts of the machine learning now if you ask me how do you define a machine language learning i would say it is just the study of algorithms that improve the performance performance is the speed at which it works actually response at which it gives at some task t that means you have to do some work actually with experience that's where the things makes difference when i say experience means i have data i have trained data sets also so now the machine has used the algorithm again and again and again every time the algorithm is executed on the data there is a result that result is again taken as input so what exactly it means is if you look at the block diagram you have a machine a computer typically you have a data you have a program and you get an output that's a traditional but in machine language whatever output you get again goes back to the computer for every iteration now one of the beautiful example for this machine language learning is google maps if you open a google maps if you say from where to start to destination if you key in from where to where you want to go it will tell you red color on the map telling that there is a traffic it will give you green or blue if there is no traffic it will give you yellow if there is a minimal traffic 
how does google knows about it how how does google is able to calculate so fast for you it is in it, the accuracy is of nanoseconds it is because machine learning what happens is whenever somebody puts a destination when he starts moving that data goes to the same server algorithm which computer uses telling that okay this car on this latitude longitude is traveling at this speed so like this there are 100 cars if the width of the road is uh, 10 uh, if, let's say if the length of the road is 10 feet and if there are four cars are moving in the same direction and each car distance or the speed by which each car is moving is very less actually that means for the next car to come it is going to slow down so it uses algorithm to say that if you take your car out in the same direction how much time you will be slowed this is one of the most beautiful practical uh, machine learning concept that has been developed by google and it's available free for us just imagine the power power of the machine learning now when are we going to use this as i told i took a example of the google you are going to use machine language when we as human we cannot work on such data and i cannot say that uh, traffic is red green light etc no i cannot say no way i can say i cannot process whole data in my brain so you need a non human existence where human expertise cannot be there yes mars tesla is planning to have a journey to mars that's also is based on machine language learning why because you have to calculate the gravitational force you have to calculate the oxygen capacity so many things why the fuel burning fuel conserving capacities then there are times where i can't explain the expertise say for example traffic i can't explain sitting here in one spot i cannot tell how it uh, is behaving in the other spot i don't have any means of expertise actually then you have to create a models prototype even before you apply you have to do the test you need a prototype you need machine language then you have to process extreme amount of data so then these are the areas where you should use machine language learning actually now as i told you google maps uber ola swiggy food panda or any apps book my show ticket they also use minimal set of algorithms actually that is what we call machine language learning okay prediction weather forecasting temperature forecasting uh, sometimes in the stock markets uh, your parents might be trading okay you the app that shows uh, how the stock prices are going what is their volatility etc in government especially in the defense and intelligence border control systems machine language learning and artificial intelligence plays a lot of key role actually for audio video visuals cross border activities etc so health science say for example in the matter of the corona time actually so all all today what we are doing is in a situation of corona and covid we are still using machine language learning to identify the pattern of the virus that caused the corona issue okay covid 19 so there still lot of companies are using advanced analytics where they are still trying to say can i synthesize a corona virus inside my lab but how is this is possible if this is possible this is going to possible only based on the artificial intelligence and the machine language learning or deep learning whatever we say so th that's where the machine language learning comes now how do we uh, implement a machine language learning in technology as i mentioned python is a software that we used to implement an ai okay if i have to write a model if i have to write an algorithm i need on mathematical library packages sign values cos values tan values then i need differentiation integration all calculus related which makes an algorithm that's where the software called okay <clears throat> python that comes with uh, help for us people like us in software we use python extremely to create algorithms in software so anaconda is a um, basically open source uh, python distribution actually so uh, if you understand open source means it's freely available that's enough don't get into too much of this so freely available uh, machine language learning implementation software for all of us is python even at uh, companies like infosys and all we use python Th that much how powerful this python software is all about okay so in your free time you can go to any of the python uh, resources and all you can study it very fairly simple mathematical library packages using that you can create an algorithm all together you can give in data then how do you make this uh, learn at itself that's where you need some specialization that's where we at industry do it 
it's still very far away. Okay, you 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 can come to industry and then see how we use it. But for this point of time, please understand that Python is a open source library that is available to create or implement a ML that is machine language learning. So we talked about AI, ML, and all. There's one more thing called deep learning. Today we are not doing just machine learning. Today we are doing deep learning. Where in deep learning we are trying to see, can I build artificial neural networks as algorithms? And can I replace human? Unfortunately, unfortunately, we don't know. But we still are trying. Can I replace a human with deep learning? So, if you come across the terminology deep learning, deep learning is advanced machine language learning. That's where we are today. Okay. So this is just a diagrammatic representation telling a deep learning. We are try. We are trying to mimic. We are trying to do mimic of human brain. That's where we stand today. Actually, but. Uh, are we success? Uh, we have started. Okay, we are not success, or not we have failed. Actually, we are in the process of the evolution of the deep learning. So, from artificial intelligence of 1950 paper from Alan Turing to the machine learning to the deep learning is where today we work. So, in industry today, we work at deep learning stage actually because deep learning is the advancement in my machine language learning era. Okay. Now, whenever I do deep learning, my deep learning is always driven by data and data scientists. If somebody asks you who is a data scientist, we should at least know that a data scientist is a specialized technologist who create the algorithm, okay, who use the algorithm to create models and he will give the initial sets of results telling that this algorithm has this output and this output shall be used for various purposes. Then come software engineers like us who take this model, convert the algorithm into the software using Python programming language. So if you hear the word called data scientist, don't get very much I think data scientists are nothing but again, people who create models, who looks into the data, who says X model is right fit made. Now, if I have to give you the exact example, IBM people in 1996 who created brute force uh, implementation they are also data scientists because they created the model L later hardware engineers and software engineers together prepared this deep loop machine okay so uh, that's how i come to the uh, conclusion of this today's session uh, i'm sure it was not boring so i have tried to stick only to the industry based knowledge which you will not be able to get it at this point of time as academia students so that's where I try to bring in Python programming language. Uh, one of the key takeaway for all of you is uh, go look at Python, uh, go to Google, type Python, you will be able to download it. There are numerous YouTube videos. There are numerous resources. It will tell you what mathematical package you can use. Select a small algorithm of your computer science, actually binary tree construction, sorting, etc. Start with a small thing. Don't, don't get into, don't think that Okay, I'm going to create a program that will be taken by Tesla and it will be used in Mars. No, no, that's not the aim. The aim is, are you able to understand, are you able to create a small routine or a sub program or a function using Python programming language? Then see the input, give the input, see the output, then train the algorithm. Training the algorithm is very much important. If you learn this, then you can go and you can say to Tesla that, hey, I can solve your, some of your problems. But to go there, first take a small algorithm which exists in your computer science or in your any of your engineering. Try to see, can you do differentiation integration using this software? See the output, get some laugh, be happy, say that I did a good job actually. Then see how you will be able to train and improve the algorithm. Actually, learn the tactics. That's all you should be doing in the area of artificial intelligence. So, uh, with this, I conclude. Okay, I just take a glass of coffee or tea so that uh, Chitra and Elizabeth can uh, take the next course of action. So, thank you very much. I'm still there to for your question and answers. Yes, sir. thank you very much, sir. Uh, that was actually a captivating session and uh, we convey a heartfelt thanks to you for sharing your valuable knowledge with us. Uh, we have a few questions, sir. Uh, can we proceed with that? Yes, 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 sure, yes. definitely. 
okay sir uh, the I... first question yes sir should i go to uh, this one uh, is there any uh, participant questions uh, is there like i can see chat window uh, uh, actually they have uh, sent it uh, privately to us sir so that we can forward we can read please. out the questions to you yeah, you please. can answer to them yes sure sure please yes sir uh, the first question is artificial intelligence really a boon for humans Uh, well, uh, all inventions are done through accidents, so no inventions are predetermined. Artificial intelligence is uh, rather than boon. I say it is the necessity of today's world. If you did not had artificial intelligence, we would not have seen Google Maps, uh, Swiggy, and uh, Food Panda kind of apps, etc. Definitely, it is the necessity of today's world. Actually. Okay, so thank you, sir. The next question: uh, Why products are not produced in Infosys except Finical? Very good, very good question. So let me correct here. Okay, uh, I am from Finical. I am a Finical architect. Okay, I've been in Finical for five years. Uh, Infosys has produced large number of products. Finical is one of a very known product. It's a financial for core banking, etc. But if you go to Infosys, in Infosys we have a Uh, what we did is a couple of years back we acquired a, a company called edgeworm actually okay which is a product company which is for agile based methodology so when we acquired the company called edgeworm uh, we got agile based methodologies and other uh, financial product software with us along with finacle we joined finacle into that um, acquired company then later we created several other products so whatever infosys creates products are all part of the edgeworm vertical one is finacle second we have created artificial intelligence product or a platform called nia infosys nia then we have created robotic process automation product okay which is assist edge okay so uh, like that we have got several products actually so finacle is not the only product we have got uh, assist edge uh, robotic process automation uh, products we have got uh, other reporting uh, products actually so there are uh, numerous products even infosys has got e-commerce products actually uh, skava which is near to coimbatore uh, main company it was created by coimbatore people only so you can look for it skava which is a e-commerce point of sale uh, application that also infosys has so infosys has got a lot of products so finacle is not only the only product Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, the next question, I think a student has asked this. Uh, can you suggest any website for learning machine language, sir? Oh, uh, okay. So thank God, actually, we have Google. Okay, uh, which is now the child company of ABC, that is the XYG company by Larry Page and all, Larry and all. So, what my only suggestion is, there is a very good website actually. Okay, Edureka is one of the site. Okay. Uh, unfortunately infosys has got a very good learning site actually which we call as uh, lex but it's not exposed to uh, non infosys people otherwise i would have given you that recommendation but please go to edureka you you demo you demi you demi is very good even some of the certifications i do so you demi courses are excellent actually so i would definitely strongly urge for the you demi actually Okay, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, shall we take up a few more questions, sir? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, definitely. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, the next one: Which coding languages uh, should be learned for artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning? Oh, very good. See, uh, no, no programming language fits all the gamuts of deep learning, uh, machine language learning, artificial intelligence, cognitive thinking, neural networks, natural language processing, etc. But, however, the recommendation or the preference is. we use c c++ most of the time today java is also used in all this actually earlier we used to use c c++ but today java is one of the language that is used for various process actually so please go to either learn java or you have to learn python actually so rather than java also i would say in the order of preference please study python okay python is basically scripting with mathematical uh, library packages is needed we use python extremely extremely in our artificial intelligence in our it world okay sir uh, the next question for voice to text speech processing which will be better to use machine learning or deep learning okay see as i said deep learning is the advanced of machine learning so 
if you you have to use deep learning in today's world if you had asked me the question 15 years ago i would have told ah oh, machine language learning is there that's all we have to use no so use deep learning where you have to use your natural language processing audio video converters codecs etc okay you need hardware support also to for recognitions uh, okay now one thing you have to always understand whenever we talk about audio there are two things one is called translation another is called transliteration so there is a difference between these two okay translation is a to a or b to b transliteration is let's say if i type a word like i would like to come so you have to write it in hindi mujhe aana hai so this is not called translation this is called transliteration where it has to fit the context this is possible only because of natural language processing which is under the hood of deep learning so machine language uh, advanced machine language learning is your deep learning actually okay sir uh, uh, the next question uh, how can we detect covid 19 disease using machine learning very good question very good actually okay uh, let me share you i'm going to take some time for this because this is the practical experience i'm sharing with you uh, one of my colleague who was in infosys actually uh, who was working in big data and ai area he has started his own uh, he started his own uh, organization called uh, uh, this one veda okay medicine related a company very recently so what he has done is it is a hyderabad based uh, company okay so what he has done is he has used machine language learning and deep learning along with big data okay we call big data if you have a data which is huge we call big data because you need huge amount of clinical data okay so now using algorithm okay what we have done is there are people who have created algorithm who have created um, uh, white papers phds on telling how what is the pattern of a virus actually okay so there are a lot of algorithms uh, which has been created in the medical field uh, for biometry or anything and it says uh, what a typical uh, virus uh, symptoms is let's say for example uh, i have to create first a data set when i say create a data set i create a data set for a human actually a human of this age of this height of this color and he is a male human like that i have to define first a data set okay in the data set i have to tell what is his uh, date of birth what is his age actually now what are his current body related conditions what is his current temperature so and uh, what is his um, frequency of visiting uh, medical clinics when he visited medical clinics did he go for fever did he go for sore throat or did he go for cough then does he have as an eye problem like that so the whole data of the human is needed now you you these are all called clinical data actually okay now using this data sets there are algorithms which takes this data sets and then they give you prediction see the output of an algorithm is called a prediction so the prediction says that he is a likely to be a patient uh, covid or corona related patient because his temperature in the given clinical data his temperature was above 37 for four days and today also it is the same thing he has visited a place uh, let's say he has visited a place where there was corona infection so he has traveled in 14 days 15 days time <coughs> then he visited the, the doctor um, because he has a sore throat uh, the data was collected then like that that is one set of uh, prediction the other set what my friend in hyderabad based um, uh, company they have done is they have taken the chest x ray chest x ray they have taken they have compared the chest x ray of a person with the chest x ray of a actual one covid person then they are trying to tell that if a person has having corona or covid uh, issues then his lungs see what happens corona affects lungs respiratory corona does not affects your heart or your uh, brain it affects your lungs so it slowly reduces the capability of your lungs to contract expand and take more oxygen so what he has done is he has taken the chest x ray scanned it converted the chest x ray into an algorithm okay then compared this algorithm with another chest x ray of a covid patient and try to match and predicate that 70% of the chest x ray that is being taken matches with the 100% of the covid patient so in in a world of uh, artificial intelligence in machine language learning we we take the results based on prediction anything that is more on the threshold value so we set if the output of the algorithm crosses 70% then it's a match like that we start giving the answer so 
this is how uh, some of my friend are trying to come up with uh, uh, coming with uh, identifying corona using chest x ray with artificial intelligence algorithms then some of my another friends who works in biotechnology company what they are trying to do is they are trying to take clinical data okay clinical data re clinical research data and trying to compare with a person's uh, clinical data actually and then say he has this uh, does that answers was that too complicated it was great actually yeah sure sure yeah this has yes. been what that's been my friend some of been i have been doing so they have taken chest x ray uh, of a normal convert the chest x ray image into a digital uh, when i say digital it is nothing but bits actually 010101 like that okay in image converted to a binary format that binary format is fed to an algorithm now that algorithm takes this image data takes the actual covid uh, chest x ray data then comes with prediction now it is important to note that this algorithm is not one time ready algorithm every time you give a data algorithm corrects itself okay it moves from 60% to 61% to 62 like that it moves actually so the uh, the system tunes itself this is what we call as artificial intelligence okay okay sir uh, the next question what are the skills should be acquired to become a master in data science artificial intelligence big data analytics etc okay now first and foremost please pass your engineering curriculum with uh, distinction marks okay <laughs> so do, don't carry any subjects forward because companies like infosys wipro or anything they don't allow you if you carry too many subjects okay so but uh, even though i was joking uh, it was in the interest of all of you first pass your academic if you if you have a very deep conscience towards or let's say affinity towards uh, data science etc first understand what is algorithm see you have to understand don't get into uh, machine and all first understand what is an algorithm how can you convert an algorithm to a software so i said python language is there so many thing is there first you should take understand what an algorithm is convert how do you convert to a software second step is you should always understand that none of the algorithm works without data okay you need to understand what a data is you need to understand what is a structured data semi structured data unstructured data say for example structured data today my ppt is a structured data okay anybody can easily understand yes now i write something on the email and send it to all of you that becomes a semi structured data now i give you the chest x ray image actually okay you have that is converted into a some digital format actually that is called unstructured data so you should have ability to understand the data second ability to know algorithm what an algorithm is the third okay convert the algorithm into a software then later you can build lot of things on top of it see directly going to a robotics and telling i am learning machine learning that is not the way you should be doing no don't learn robots and say i learned artificial intelligence learn what is data what is algorithm what is its output how to convert it and how to train the algorithm this is all what you have to do uh, great sir uh, the next question what is the difference between uh, python and cloud in future which is highly used in the information field will it be iot or ai okay first let me break the question uh, python and cloud these are not uh, uh, anything see patch. python is python is a programming cloud is an infrastructure these are two unrelated things so uh, i understand um, uh, question is very good uh, but i want to clarify that cloud means something with that you work on some other's infrastructure that is called cloud okay but python is a programming language like how i write java public static void main in c you write public um, public um, method like that like that python is a scripting language okay so let's be clear that python is a programming language cloud is what something infrastructure these two are not related second iot ai and all okay see uh, what happens is when you come to industry or when you graduate from being academic okay you get exposed to multi dimensional uh, aspects of uh, your job actually where iot ai cognitive thinking they all cross cut each other all three are like a venn diagram if i write a venn diagram so it is like this actually okay if i have to put everything it's like a venn diagram where iot needs machine language learning machine language needs machines and the machine needs data so uh, there's no specific choice that you can do but under under underlying 
regardless of iot or regardless of machine language or deep uh, learning what you need is again i said previously you need to understand data you need to understand algorithm you need to understand how to convert it even in iot also you have to do the same thing so uh, specialization can occur once you understand or once you get your hands on with ml dl cognitive or uh, specific uh, hardware uh, related uh, device software so at this point of time don't worry too much on iot uh, mil worry on the data worry on the algorithm worry on how to see the output of the algorithm great sir one last question uh, it is from a viewer on the youtube channel yes uh, sir. what is the difference between strong artificial intelligence and weak artificial intelligence okay okay see strong and weak are always adjectives and subjectives okay okay so there is there is nothing called uh, a strong or a weak uh, artificial intelligence if you develop an artificial intelligence platform it is in the interest of the human kind you can see results is a strong ai if if you develop uh, using inappropriate algorithms they give you some amount of output but it is not able to digest it okay that's a weak uh, ai actually okay let me give you a very practical example for this question okay so this reminds me uh, some of the things google wear um, we all know about google wear uh, what is google wear google came up with a spectacle okay where from the spectacle you will be able to get the images actually on your spectacle and you will be able to see like how a uh, iron man i am sure you have seen the film like iron man 1 2 3 and all where you will be able to get the distance it uses infrared rays and it uses image processing capabilities in the google wear now what happened with this google wear today the google wear is banned across all over the country um, a few years back google wear was created on artificial intelligence and a very strong uh, platform why did it fail why did it become weak uh, wear because of the algorithms that we use there did not support human kind there were privacy issues there were security issues there were manipulative issues so almost all the country banned this google wear so it became a weak ai product actually wonderful sir uh, thank you very much sir for uh, patiently taking up all the questions and answering them in a very great way uh, so let me come... yes sir so uh, can we ask any one of the student to call out what is the feedback so that's my question okay <laughs> one of the question <laughs> okay. i have can you please provide opportunity to any student or any faculty other than uh, uh, elizabeth chitra and pranit is there any other faculty member whom with okay. whom i have not interacted i would like to hear what is what went well or what went wrong actually okay uh, if any of the participants can raise your hands we would unmute you and uh, you can talk to sir directly yes yes kindly raise your hands so that you can give your feedback any one of the participants among the 170 uh, uh chitra dharnikot yes, srinivas rao sir was very much interested to call interact yes, with the presenter so uh, yeah, yeah, that's really uh, see i, I have will, one yeah i will also be comfortable that i am speaking to human because i gave a uh, seminar or a uh, topic on artificial intelligence and so that uh, it was not robots who listened actually okay uh, sir you are unmuted uh, darani coach srinivas sir kindly you can speak to sir yeah, directly please, now uh, mr mr srinivas please go ahead sir uh, please tell me what went uh, right what went wrong because see i will tell you there is a reason why i asked this question because human mind is also a, like in algorithm based okay unless you give me output feedback i will not be able to improve so i am using your data your inputs as a data as a data set to give algorithm to my brain heart lungs and everywhere and see what i can do better in the next so this is see in fact this is a very real uh, way of telling uh, how an algorithm works okay we need training data every time i speak i get the output and i improve myself okay please go ahead go ahead actually sir shrinivas rao sir are you there okay let us call manikantan sir okay manikantan asked to mm-hmm. mute yeah oh, oh, oh because mr. i want mr uh, manikanta you can uh, hello talk now okay Hello, sir. Good evening. Yeah, good evening, sir. Good evening, very much. Sir, Anaconda is a programming language or another language? No, no, no. Anaconda, Anaconda is a uh, freeware distribution of uh, Python programming language. See what happens in IT industry, right? Let's say 
I create Java. Okay, you would have heard about the word called Java. No, oh. Java, Java compilers and Java interpreters, what we call, are given by IBM also gives, Microsoft also gives, Sun Microsystem gave, no, which Oracle has taken. So, even though we say Java, we always specify, is it an IBM Java environment or is it a Microsoft Java environment like that? Different people give different flavors, actually. So what Anaconda is, it's a free distribution version of Python. See, Python has got a lot of compilers and editors, OK? See, you, using Python, you can also create your own uh, interpreters. But Anaconda is one such uh, fairly used uh, Python distribution. Sir, Anaconda and Python are similar? The Anaconda is from the Anaconda is the free distribution of the Python compilers actually. Just like I said, IBM, Java, Microsoft, Java, both are Java only. But at the end of the day, you have to work with any one Java. So Anaconda is the free open source distribution for Python. Okay, sir. Thank you for giving information. Sure, sure, sure. Srinivasa Rao, sir, you're actually unmuted. So any any student, any one student who would like to speak? Yes, sir. That's what we are checking out, sir. If you have raised your hands, so we are asking them to unmute. Yeah, yeah. So I can see Manikanta has raised the hand. So Mr. Manikanta, please uh, speak. Uh, he was the one who spoke uh, just now. So he asked about Anaconda and uh, ah, okay, okay. Very Python. Good. Okay. So so I think uh, yeah, any questions from your panel, Chitra, Elizabeth, Anshu, or anyone? So let me hear. Uh, so please tell me what went well, what uh, could have been better. Uh, this is a very good uh, feedback session. It was actually up. excellent, sir. We did not have uh, any suggestions to say from our side, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, you explained everything in a very uh, normal language. Like we are from electronics background. Uh, we usually think that artificial intelligence, machine learning, everything belongs to CAC. We, we usually see that in a different way and difficult uh, for us, mm -hmm. actually. But the way you explained it was very easy for us also to understand. Mm -hmm. I hope it will be the same to all the participants also. And your presentation was uh, truly captivating. It was the best. Okay. See, I made it non-technical for the reason that like if I bring in my uh, expertise here, uh, uh, my algorithm will run and there will be no output actually. Uh, it was actually great, sir. Uh, we understood everything uh, what you told right from the beginning till the end. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for that, sir. Oh, it's a, and uh, thanks for providing. I, actually, in, in, in fact, I want to specially thank Mr. A.K. Srivastava. He was the one who really made all this possible. Okay, uh, he is my senior. Uh, he is one of my very well wisher, extremely knowledgeable, experienced person. Uh, I'm very sure you are all very lucky to have such a senior, expertise person from industry. He worked in MCF Hassan Master Control Facility. He is an engineer of 1970 or something. So he is worked in Master Control Facility, which is a ISRO organization. So I'm very sure. He's doing good work at Savita Engineering, and uh, you are all really uh, very much uh, lucky to have him actually it's because he has seen me right from my childhood actually. Okay, so so he, but he's a very knowledgeable uh, person. Person, actually. yes, so, definitely. So my special thanks uh, with bowing my head uh, because uh, he's very senior to me. Okay, I don't know whether I can call his name directly. I should also say she was so uncle. Okay. <laughs> okay, sir. okay. Uh, sir, good evening, sir. This is uh, D. Srinivasa Rao from Indian Railways. First of all, I take this opportunity to thank uh, the organizers for uh, arranging such a nice uh, uh, program through you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am from Railways. I am uh, a faculty in the Indian Railway Signaling Institute, South Central Railway for Indian Railways. Sure, sure. And uh, it was indeed an excellent uh, presentation, sir. We would like to have your contact so that we can invite you for our ERISET railway program for you. Sure, sure, definitely. See. I'm working as a deputy general manager. I am also, of course, a faculty. I've been to the telecom for the last 30 years. And okay. I, I can I have your contacts, sir, how it is to reach you. Or sure, can you sure. give me mail ID? I will send a formal mail officially. No worries. So uh, Chitra has my formal email ID, info okay. CCT. You can okay. mail it. So, but before that, uh, let me add a few things. Uh, since you're from the railway uh, department, yeah, uh, we are all proud of our Indian Railways. Why? Because Indian Railways is the biggest railway system we have in India. So, and it's one of the biggest railway system. Uh, if you make a search on uh, Google or if you see, nothing stands in front of our Indian Railways. Such a complicated, 
managed system they are also going with lot of digital transformation programs okay so even i had given a proposal to one of german uh, rail d bond actually okay they called okay. when i was in frankfurt so i i know about railway system uh, india's railway system is one of the most complicated railway system and it's one of the biggest railway system we have on earth actually so we all should be proud of that actually. so we are also we are also in the process of copying the european uh, telecom uh, this thing to have high uh, speed trains which is about 250 km pitch Uh, yes, speed, yes. which we are coming up with LTE technology and uh, artificial intelligence, machine learnings. Uh, so we'd like to get in touch with us for our senior officers and uh, general managers' uh, presentations. Sure, 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 definitely. But but uh, uh, that's what like uh, we are moving from our orthodox nature into more open digitalization era in uh, railways. That way, I'm aware of it. See, uh, I I I used to work with government from Infosys, like uh, GST, Income Tax Department. then uh, customs ministry of uh, uh, computer applications and all so i i know about the indian uh, government actually okay okay sure. okay sir i would like to have your mail id so that i can reach you sure sure i will i will provide you uh, architra can provide you directly yes okay. sir i'll provide him sir uh, madam uh, thank you very much sir yes. thank you very much for uh, giving us such a wonderful and interactive one session person, one of the person raised his hand actually murli Or maybe oh. we would like to see does he wants to say something uh, anything uh, before we close it. Mr. Mr. Their... Murali Krishna, have you uh, can you raise your hand once again so that we can unmute you? Actually, someone else has raised their hand, sir, by named Arti. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just before we. so that we don't disappoint anyone so that okay okay sir is there is any last moment uh, things miss artya can unmute yourself and talk miss artya have raised your hand we have given the access uh, to unmute yourself you can unmute yourself and talk to sir so i don't think they are unmuting no worries actually so uh, uh, for all of you thanks again to management of savita engineering uh, miss uh, chitra ma'am elizabeth ma'am uh, all the stuff but more about uh, very heartful uh, salutations and respects to ak shrivatsav uncle so he has been one the driving force uh, in making sure that uh, uh, i come here actually so i'm very much uh, Uh, privileged by ak shivatsav's uh, encouragement so i'm not sure whether ak shivatsav is there on this call but can please convey my heartfelt respects actually definitely sir yes. thank you very much for accepting our invite and uh, giving this wonderful session for the past uh, one and a half hour sir sure. and thank you also for answering all the questions patiently and in fact interacting with our audiences that was a great fun sure sure my pleasure it's my yes. duty actually yes thank, thank you very, thank very much. much thank you madam thank you thank you sir. We thank all the participants of today's webinar for joining with us. Hope you would have enjoyed the session well, and all the questions have been answered by the speaker of our day. Our upcoming webinar is on onboard satellite and ground station performance and evaluation by Mr. A. C. Mohanty, retired scientist, engineer, S. G. M. C. F. I. S. R. O. Department of Space, Hassan. I request all the faculties and students to attend the webinar and get benefited. Meet you all in the next session of our webinar series. I request the participants to fill up the feedback form with the correct email ID. The link for feedback form has been posted in the chat box in Zoom as well as in the YouTube live streaming page. Kindly fill up the feedback form with the correct email ID and receive your e-certificates. Kindly complete.